Hey Fly Tires, welcome back. My name is Matt, thanks for stopping by the channel. Now the pattern I'm going to be tying tonight is the next one in my Great Smoky Mountain series. It's called a Groundhog Caddis. And depending on what area of the country you're from, a groundhog might also be called a woodchuck. When you go into the fly shop looking for materials, ask for woodchuck, not this guy. And as far as dry fly caddis patterns go, this is one of the easier ones to tie. You can mix it up, change the color of the dubbing or the hackle to match any of the variety of the caddis that are in your waters. But it's a simple, fun one to tie. I think you're gonna like it. Let's get started. So there it is in the vise, the Groundhog Caddis on a size 12, 1X long dry fly hook. I'm gonna put down a base of black 70 denier UTC all the way to the bend of the hook. Now let's wrap up the body. Any dry fly dubbing, a cream or light yellow. I'm using super fine. Pretty thin noodle. We're gonna dub it up to about two thirds. Two thirds of the length of the hook. Okay, now that you've got a, a body, take your groundhog. Or if you don't live in the south, you call it a woodchuck. Woodchuck. So this is pretty cool, cool material. Each tuft of hair, you get three distinct colors. It's similar to squirrel. You'll get a, a light brown on the tip, and then a black, and then a medium brown. And you'll want about, uh, you know, not a, a thick wing, maybe about that much right there and you'll snip it off, pull out the, the fluff and the under fur at the bottom. Definitely put it in your hair stacker, give it a good stack. And then see how that, okay, I think that worked well enough right there. So pull that out. See, there's a lot of, lot of that under fur in there for only this many um, tips. And you'll go ahead and measure it out. You'll want, the wing to be just, you know, a little bit past the bend of the hook, maybe right there. So I'm gonna switch hands, I'm gonna do a pinch wrap, and then back up, holding it tight with my material hand before I pull it straight up, and then come down. Because it'll spin around on you, just like any, any deer hair or any elk hair if you're not careful. So just a couple wraps before you really lock it in. Now it's not gonna flare up on you like an elk hair caddis, which is, is you know, the intent of the fly, a, a flatter wing right there. So I think that's good right there. Let's get a couple of locking wraps right here before we snip this excess off up front. Now if you can trim this at, at an angle, it will help you with your taper. So try to reach in here and just snip it like like that right there and a couple of tight wraps winding it on down toward the the eye now if you can build this as a a nice taper and a ramp see i got a little bit of a step right there i'm going to try to fill that in it will make wrapping the hackle much easier and it is a heavily hackled fly so we're going to get this we're going to make Oh, six or seven or so wraps of the hackle. So take your thread back to the start of the wing. Now take your brown dry fly hackle. You could use a ginger, you could use a, a, anything. The original has a, a pretty dark hackle. So I'm trying to stick with that. I mean, use Grizzly if that's all you got, it'll be fine. So catch this in back there with a slightest bit of bare stem still showing and then I'm going to wrap this in up here and then snip off this excess right here and just try to smooth this back out so that wrapping this hackle won't be too challenging now if you need your hackle pliers go ahead and grab them I think I have enough I've got about four inches of feather right here, so I should be fine. Just each wrap slightly in front of the other. Now, 
I wasn't counting. I think that was five. Some of them I've been getting six. So five or six wraps just to get a nice big thick hackle up there. A couple of wraps to secure it. Go ahead and snip this excess off. Now if we can push these back in here, get this head neatened up before we finish it off, that will give us a nice tidy looking fly. So back up directly behind the eye and build this little bit of ramp right here. It's a dry fly, so don't get too carried away with your thread. This is an 8 aught, so I've, I've got, I can spare a few extra wraps, even though keeping your wraps to a minimum always makes for a neater looking head. So a four turn whip finish here. And the groundhog caddis. Well, a drop of head cement. And groundhog caddis is done. So a very easy tie, folks. Can be very effective. I appreciate you watching, and we'll see you next time.